I'm at a standstill and I'm not sure how to get out of it. It's a stagnant, overwhelmed feeling. I try to stay on top of meditating. Is there something I should be doing in order to move forward? Well, part of your problem is this idea that you should be anywhere else than where you are right now. Part of this problem is in witnessing, seeing, identifying the progress of other people and mistaking that for progress that you should have made by now. Part of that is looking at other people and admiring them. This is not envy or jealousy, but admiring how much they seem to know, how much they seem to do, and living their life in a way that's purposeful, purposeful, that you don't feel you're doing it right now. And so we're looking here, we're looking there, but there is not enough grace and appreciation for where it is that we are now. Now, Andrea, it's something that I've been trying to work on for the last two years was how to articulate how I stopped giving a fuck. Like, at some point it happened. I stopped being mad at my dad. <clears throat> I stopped being worried about money. <clears throat> and when this happened, money came. And when I stopped being mad at my dad, joy came. And these were things that I'd worked on all my life because they were programmed into me by my father. When was that moment? Where was I when I had a breakthrough that I didn't even notice? I don't know. I've been asking spirit because I want to tell you guys how to do it. I want to say, all you have to do is think like this, and it's over. But it is so amorphous and ambiguous to me, and I couldn't tell you where I was in the journey when I tipped over the edge. And so we can't look at where we are and think it would be better to be somewhere else. Because if I had yanked myself out of where I was supposed to be because I felt like I needed to be doing something different or being potent, powerful, living my purpose, which is what you're talking about. If I hadn't spent the years twiddling my thumbs, drinking bottles of wine, hanging out with my friends, which seems like a waste, if I hadn't done that, I would not have reached the space where I could release a lot of that. And so spirit would show to me that you are in what is it? Is it awareness? Is it information? Is it resource? Is it energy? It is not awareness. So if it's something you think you don't know, you're not putting it together, it's not that. Like, I haven't, I haven't found the tool yet. I haven't found the book yet. I haven't found the teacher yet. It's not that. What you thought that, it's not that. Is it energy? Why can't I connect to energy? Why do these people have all of these experiences and evidences and I can't connect to the energy? Why me? It's not that. Spirit exists within us and without us, but within us primarily. Where's the disconnect within the self? Is there an aspect of you that when you are doing nothing feels guilty about that? I do. Is there an aspect of you when you are in a routine that seems meaningless, feels like you're betraying a calling? That is an illusion. What I said to Caroline, I'm going to say to you, and it's true, every one of you, listen up with your ears that hear. You are already in a ministry. You are, you are already in your light work. You don't have to be in a powerful place, position, sitting under a powerful teacher with some powerful information, that's inconsequential. All you have to do is to be willing to occupy the highest vibration that you can come into contact with right now. We all can come into contact right now with love in some way. Our kids, our cat, our dog, our husband, our past, our accomplishments, and our achievements. We can all connect right now to a high vibration. All you have to do to live a powerful ministry is to stay there longer. 
It is to stay there longer. Did Jesus have a church? No, actually, he didn't. Was he Joel Osteen of Lakewood in Houston with 9,000 members? No. He just walked around, and he picked wheat, and he talked to people. That was his entire ministry, and that was powerful. Same with Buddha. Same with Sai Baba. Same with a lot of the mystics. They just existed at what they knew to be true about the highest vibration. What is that for you? I think Abraham Hicks calls this the the high-flying disc. What brings you joy? And it doesn't have to be a big deal. It doesn't have to be spiritual. What is it that brings you joy? Stay there and be that and walk around the planet doing that. That's all you have to do, and you've already done it. Why do you feel a sense of lack when you have already done that and know to do that? Who programmed into you these ideas that you should be more? Who's who's telling you that? It's not just you. It's not just you. And at some point, you agreed with it, right? Second agreement, the four agreements. Somebody said, I speak this reality of who you should be over you. And you said, I agree. And it was either overt or it was subliminal. It was around you in the modeling of other people or the energy. But you agreed with it. Forget all that. You are exactly where you're supposed to be. Who knows when the moment will happen when you tip over into this complete release and this complete metamorphosis. Who knows? Maybe you're there. Maybe this is the metamorphosis. What if it was only this? Would you be unhappy? Why? That's ungrateful. What if this was all it ever was? Why is that bad? It's good. You are still here existing as a soul. You still have the control over your own vibration, your perception, and your experience. Use that. It's nothing more than that. It isn't anything more than that, and we can all do that. You already succeed. You already win. You're already powerful.